It's Saturday, November 20th, 2010, and welcome to an Android tablet hardware type edition of This Week in Linux News. For a while now, Netflix has been available on a bevy of mobile devices as well as just about every other device out there, except for Linux and Android. Well, that's all about to change, except there's a couple of hiccups. According to Greg Peters of Netflix Product Development, they're working on implementing the DRM necessary to put Netflix on the Android devices. The problem they're finding, though, is they're having to implement it at a hardware level, so it is going to be done on a device-by-device -device basis, which is going to make it take a really long time, and there are going to be some devices that it's just never going to be available for. Now, they didn't provide any sort of list of what's going to work and what's not going to work, so we're just going to have to wait and see which ones they decide to make Netflix work on, but it is definitely cool that they're working on making it work with Linux, making it work with Android. It's not going to be on the Linux desktop. We're not talking about desktops today. It is very interesting, though, to hear them mention that the fragmentation of Android is the problem in this case, and I'm guessing it has something to do with DRM being more hardware-based than software-based. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. And since we're talking about Android, let's go ahead and get all the Android news out of the way first. At the Web 2.0 Summit in San Francisco this week, Google CEO Eric Schmidt announced they're adding functionality to Gingerbread, Android 2.3, that should allow devices to be turned into a large credit card of sorts. Basically, these devices will have to have some sort of a chip embedded in them that when they're placed near a certain sensor, they will allow the user to make a payment with it. As to whether or not people will actually use this, who knows, but uh, it is kind of cool to see that coming. From the article I read, they think Google might be trying to beat Apple to the punch with regard to getting this out there first. But a contactless payment system, it's not a new idea. There's been the whole idea of FastPass for a very long time now. It's just taking that and throwing it into your cell phone. And moving past the idea of gingerbread, you know, it's not even out yet, let's stop talking about it. Honeycomb rumors are already in the works. Apparently Motorola has been working closely with Google on developing Honeycomb, and they've got a tablet that's supposed to come out with it sometime in March. Again, gingerbread's not out yet, it's gonna be really odd to see something skip over it and just go straight to 3.0. But like I said, it's still in the rumor phase, but a lot of people are saying that gingerbread is not going to be the tablet-specific OS everyone's expecting, it's just going to be an incremental update in that direction, and Honeycomb is going to be the this-is-designed-for-tablets operating system. And since we're talking about things coming in the new year, the CEO of NVIDIA has said that these Tegra 2 chips that are going to be coming in newer tablets are going to offer better performance, better graphics, better multitasking, better everything pretty much. Now he makes it sound like there aren't going to be any Tegra 2 tablets on the market until after the new year, but I was at Sears yesterday and they actually have a tablet already with a Tegra 2 chip in it. If you're curious, it's the ViewSonic 10-inch Android tablet. It is not the ViewPad that they have shown on their site. I looked on the ViewSonic site. I can't even find it there, but it's a $400 tablet. You can find it at Sears or Kmart's website. It's got a 1 gigahertz Tegra 2 processor, 512 megs of RAM. I think it had pretty much everything but HDMI out on it, which is not really a killer for me, but it's supposed to do 1080p video and all those fun things. After reading the reviews, it doesn't sound great though, so I may not even be looking into it, but if you are interested in it, let me know, and I will make sure to have the link to that. And just in case you're curious, Barnes & Noble's Nook Color started shipping out this week at a price point of $249. However, it doesn't really fit into the traditional e-reader standpoint. It is still, of course, running the Android operating system. It's supposed to have an 800 MHz processor. It's got 8 gigs of built-in flash storage and upgradable to an additional 32 gigs of micro SD storage. It can function as a media player, and they're going to be introducing a Nook app store that's sort of an alternative to the Android marketplace, with over 200,000 apps in it at launch. Now that said, it's not going to work with the Android marketplace out of the box. It may never work with the Android marketplace unless you flash it with some other firmware. I'm not familiar with all that, so I'm, don't ask me. But at $250 with a color screen, this is definitely a step away from the general idea of e-readers and more toward a tablet, so it's sort of a crossover. What do you think of the Nook Color? Let me know in the comment section below. It actually is very tempting for me. And since we're talking about tablets, and I mentioned that Sears had one earlier, Kmart's actually coming out with their own tablet as well. It's made by Sylvania, it's a 7-inch tablet, and the 1 GHz processor that comes built in it is supposed to do all of the audio and video decoding on the chip itself, which makes it just a little bit faster. It's supposed to do 1080p video decoding. It's supposed to be $180, it's got a 7-inch screen like I said, it's got two mini USB ports, a 6-hour battery, a webcam, and it's even supposed to have a mini HDMI out or maybe even a regular HDMI out. Sounds very tempting at 180 bucks. I might have to give it a look. 
And one last little bit of tablet news, a member of the XDA forums has announced that he managed to get Ubuntu running on the Samsung Galaxy Tab. Now he managed to do this by putting it on a micro SD card, sticking it into the device, running a local terminal and telling it to run a script, and then once Ubuntu was running within that local terminal session, he connected to it through VNC. So it's not quite running, but it is still an Ubuntu ROM running on top of the Android operating system. There is a video showing it running though, so if you want to see that video, I'll have links to it in the show notes, which you can find in the source code below. And let's move away from the Android and the tablet news and get into the mobile device news. AMD has announced that they're going to be joining the efforts of Intel and Nokia in the Mego project. It's believed that AMD expanding their efforts there are going to help them in marketing their new Fusion chips, which, if I hadn't mentioned before, have an open source driver available that's not publicly available. So that's actually pretty cool to see an open source driver coming from ATI, AMD, whoever they want to be this week. And let's end things with the Jolly Cloud Netbook. Just a couple of weeks ago it was only a rumor, and supposedly it's going to start shipping this Monday. This is not a rumor at this point, it's been confirmed by Jolly Cloud themselves. It's coming with an Intel N550 dual-core processor, a 250 gig hard drive and a 10 inch screen. Very little other than that is known at this point, but it's gonna be 279 British pounds if you'd like to pick one up. Well, that's all I've got for you as far as Android, tablets, and mobile stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.